Let's have Apollo. Apollo? We know about this switch, right? We know what it is. Yeah. Well, think of when it was used that day. Think of what happened. Well, Mr. Justice, if you have any further information to share concerning this switch... Your Honor. Yes, Mr. Justice? I'd be remiss in not telling the court this before. I know what this switch is. Hmm. Well, it seems the defense is set upon linking this switch to this case. Let's see your evidence of the link. What evidence do you have to explain what this switch is? Uh, the... Igniter. Prosecutor Gavin, you remember this. Uh, that, that's... That's what? Is it another one of those newfangled phones? <laughs> yeah, definitely. This is an igniter. What phone looks like this? <laughs> Seriously. Uh, igniter, you mean it's like a lighter? Yes, actually. You weren't saying this switch is a remote. I am. This is a remote trigger for an igniter. What? Look, I'll show you. Burn! Yeah, yeah, yeah! Mr. Justice, you will cease and desist from burning down this courtroom. <laughs> uh, sorry. This is a bit more fire than I expected. My whiskey's are caught on fire. Prosecutor Gavin, let me repeat myself. <laughs> the switch is a remote ignited control trigger. Doesn't that suggest something to you? You're talking about what happened to me, aren't you? Huh. Ah. Exactly, that night is at the concert there was one unusual burst of flame. Burn, baby, burn! When your guitar caught fire in the middle of your performance. Wasn't that part of the stage show, though? Prosecutor Gavin was entirely unaware such a thing had been planned. And the guitar that burned was a valuable keepsake. That's right, he got it in Borgenia from Lamar. He said the sound was amazing. Before it burnt, of course. Now it just kind of smokes. The better the guitar, the brighter it burns. Air forehead. Yes. Don't tell me you're trying to tie these two things together. Those being the shooter's voice heard by Lamar, and the guitar suddenly catching on fire. I am, it's really simple when you think about it. Miss Latouse and the shooter were at the crime scene. The shooter was wearing a headset. He ordered someone on stage to press the switch. Oh, that's right, we don't know when Lamar actually overheard them. We don't know what time it was, so for all we know... Oh! Oh, Midian, I am so She went past the window because that was when she was doing the disappearing act. She was running past the window, overheard something, and she was running to get to the other point where she'd randomly appear for the magic act. It was during that time. Oh, I'm an idiot. The switch was pressed and the guitar caught fire. But that means this has nothing to do with the case. In the end, that means it has nothing to do with it. That's gonna be the end thing, right? It has nothing to do with the case. Well, that does seem to make sense. Though something about it is bugging me. Can't quite put my finger on it. it really seems quite simple to me. Objection! Hey, forehead, don't destroy what little respect I have for you. I was expecting something a little more sensible. I guess I was wrong. What's this all about, Prosecutor Gavin? His simple story simply makes no sense. Think that Nyme guitar caught on fire, yes. The cause may have been this indeed. However, the guitar caught fire during the second set, exactly. Ah, uh, that's right, of course. The guitar caught fire during Lemar's song. Indeed, yet the shooting happened during the third set. The two are utterly unrelated. Hmm, yes, that must have been what was bugging me. The whole premise for this is faulty. See, his story makes no sense. Are you sure about that? What does that do mean, Mr. Justice? Maybe it's not the premise for my explanation of the Switch that's at fault. Maybe it's our premise for the entire case so far. What premise is this specifically? I'm glad you asked. I'm saying that maybe the killing didn't take place in the third act. Objection! What's this? But Detective Emma Sky heard shots and found the body. All of this happened in the third act. Objection! Gunshots rang out. 
And according to his testimony, Marky was in that dressing room at the time. Where are you going with this? Where are you going with this, Mr. Justice? Stay with me, Your Honor. He also told us in his testimony. Namely, that the victim had already been shot. We all heard gunshots, but no one saw the shooting. This... this is insane. This is before the shooting took place. The shooter was heard on the headset. Telling someone to press the switch. The next moment, Prosecutor Gavin's guitar burst into flames. We know that a remote triggered igniter was inside the guitar. From all these facts, we can draw only one conclusion. The crime did not take place during the third act. But during the Ballard performance, the second act. What? He actually has a point there. Order, order, order! But that, is go that goes against the evidence. What does, Your Honor? The crime was carried out according to the lyrics of the song, yes? Hey, he's right, look! The bullet is supposed to come after the fire. You're thinking about it the wrong way. Huh? Look, why would the shooter craft the events of the day to follow the lyrics? It's an awful lot of trouble to go through. With little merit for the person doing it. Yeah. I'm starting to think, um... Maybe they messed it up on purpose? Now... I don't know why they do that, but it makes sense. Like, there's a lyric sheet, there's all these different uh, ways. It's like I'm in Duncan Rumpo, uh, Duncan Rumpo 2. There was a movie about, and there was like three deaths that happened there. And then the deaths were performed in the real world, but they're a randomized order to make them think it's a copycat, but it isn't. So maybe that's what this is like. With little merit for the person doing it. I'm sure whoever has had some reason. Yes, they did. A reason they made it adventure. Adventurous. Advent Advanta advantageous. Advantageous to follow lyrics, fuck you. You're saying the order was reversed on purpose? Hmm, reverse. Prosecutor Gavin. If the criminal followed the lyrics as strictly, then yes. The shooting would have had to come after the guitar burst into flames. Yet her forehead has raised another possibility. He's claimed that the bullet came not after, but just before the fire. Couldn't have put it better myself. We were, the o we were only meant to think that the shooting came off the guitar burst in the fire. That was the criminal's objective. The crime followed the lyrics to a point, but that was the ru that was the rules. Why else would the killer risk discovering my discovery by moving the body? That was the final touch to make us think he'd follow the lyrics the same way. Order, order, order! That would explain the most unusual situation. It does. The killer changed the order of events to recreate himself an alibi. In other words, the killer was someone who had an alibi for the third set, but not the second. Objection! I was hoping it wouldn't come to this, but sadly it has. Let me tell you why your little fairy tale makes no sense at all. Oh, it sounds good. I'll give you that. You've given us a reason why the killer bothered following the lyrics of my song. But I question your logic. For it's flawed from the very beginning. Flawed? Yes, a contradiction in the forehead, once I've, one I've pointed out several times, no less. At the time of the crime, the small window at the scene was closed. At the moment, I've heard a voice through it. I know that you would like to divert our attention from this critical fact. But you're basing your entire line of reasoning on a false premise. She was actually in the vent, right? She was in the vent because it's her way to doing the magic trick. Right. Lamar's testimony is my entire case. That voice she heard, the shooter's voice. What if she couldn't hear it, Apollo? Look, what do we have? A man saying press the switch. And near the crime scene, we have a switch, which acts as a remote trigger for an igniter. And last but not least, prosecutor Gavin's flaming guitar. Can't all be coincidence, but how do I make it work? I see a more direct line of questioning is required when the crime scene was investigated immediately after the crime. The window was closed. Care to tell us how Lamar held the voice? Mm, key point, to be sure. Mr. Justice, can you explain this to the court? Okay, Justice, you've got one thing to prove, one thing only. Lamar heard a voice. She heard it during the second set. Think, how is Lamar able to hear the voice? She has divine hearing. 
<laughs> the window was open. <laughs> she was somewhere else. When we investigated the scene, the window was closed. She would have had no reason to close it had it been open either. Meaning it was impossible to hear the voice through the window. Ah, it's good to hear you making sense again. For a moment, I was afraid you might not—you might be a Borginian too. As I was saying, Lamar could not hear the voice through the window. So there can only be one explanation. She heard the voice from another location entirely. What's this? <laughs> you do abuse me so. And here I thought you and Good Sense were back on speaking terms. Now I'm afraid you and Good Sense speak two entirely different languages. Shall I interpret for you, Herr Forehead? Lamar clearly stated she heard the voice through that small window. And there is only one smaller window at the scene. Are you sure? Think about it. Isn't there another small window at the scene? That there is? The vent. It's not really a window, but it's still small. Oh, I know that look. He wants us to ask him. Very well, you claim Lamar heard the voice from another location. But it's just to show us where the location was. Lamar heard the voice from here. Oh, there's another vent. I just realized that. Take that! Does this look like a small window to you, Mr. Justice? The state of modern society can be read from numerous objects and artifacts. In a sense, anything can be a window in our society. Do not ask you to point out a window on a society. I wonder. La la la. Fuck you. <laughs> it's a vent, though. <laughs> okay, I can actually go to the side. It's the same thing as this. It's a vent. Boom. This is where Lamar heard the voice from. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> it's the same thing as a vent. And it would make more sense if it was that vent because it'd be directly above where the body would, would be. <laughs> Although I guess Darian would have moved away from the body, so yeah, nah, 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 whatever. <laughs> but that's not a small window. That's the air vent. You said differently for other vents. What did she tell us? She says she's a board genie and unfamiliar with that language. It's not a stretch to imagine she called this an event or a small Objection! Now you've done it. You've gone beyond ridiculous into ludicrous and then spectacular. So Lemoir was up in the ventilation system listening to this man's voice. It's the only logical explanation, yes. Logical, I do not think this word means what you think it means, Air Forehead. Okay, what about it is unlogical? Eh, it hardly merits saying. Why would Lamar be in the ventilation system? Hiding like a rat, no offense intended to her, of course. The explanation for that is simple, prosecuted Gavin. Yeah, it kind of is, actually. Like, that's where she was doing a magic trick, right? 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 You have been listening to our discussion here, yes? Yes, I admit it is. It's had me quite confused since yesterday. Yes, the small window was closed. But why should that mean I could not hear through it? I feel our prosecutor might himself in an interpreter. Eh. Problem here is words. There are the small window through which you heard the voice. Was it up high on the ceiling of the room, not low? Yes, it was up on the ceiling. What? Yeah, her, voc her vocabulary is very bad. She doesn't know what a vent is. Order, order! I will have order! Witness, you will clarify the statement to the court. Are you in fact saying that you were above, up above the ceiling of the room? And that's where you heard the moment of the crime? Yes, in fact I was. I'm sorry, I never imagined it would become such an important point. Yes, well, why the heck were you up there? God damn it, lady. I believe it's time for another testimony. I'm not sure, I, I can't. May I remind you this is a murder trial. We will hear your testimony, you bitch. Tell us why you witnessed the crime from above the ceiling of the room. Please. Yeah, fine. No, sir, I'd love to see what your mouth actually looks like. Seriously, you wear that thing all the time. The only time we have to see it is when you freak out and it goes up to your eyes. Seriously. What? <laughs> God damn it, Josh. <laughs> Stop it. Well, looks like I'm on the right track. Sounded like the judge there. This is my normal voice. It's a little lower. Yeah. 
Above the ceiling. Yes, I was above the ceiling when I heard the voice. Oh, it's war. Oh, you're able to walk in it. That's funny. Maybe it was just that big. I had heard there was a uh, small window there before. It was in the middle of my performance. I had no time to report what I had heard. As to why I was there, I cannot say. I am bound to secrecy on this matter. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. Bound to secrecy. In my line of work, in my line of work, one has many obligations to uphold. I'm probably gonna have to like do the video table or something because it shows her disappearing. But you say you're in the middle of your performance, so this did happen during the second set. I do not witness the crime. You must understand. I only know what I heard. Yes, but you must tell us what you were doing in detail. That's what the cross examination is for, Herr Forehead. Our mission in this court is to discern the truth. No obligation in binding the pact may hinder that mission. Mm, very well. Mr. Justice, you may begin the cross-examination. What are you going to do, Apollo? I'm going to find out the truth. Fix. She was up above the ceiling for a reason. I just had to get it out of her. Yeah, I already know what it is. I was above the ceiling. Hold it. Above the ceiling? Could you be more specific? I cannot. Because you're bound to secrecy. Yes. To tell the truth, I was not supposed to even say I was about the ceiling. I did not say more. Hmm, doesn't sound like I'll be able to coax it out of her just by asking. I heard there was a uh, small window there before. It was in the middle of my performance. I had to turn report. La 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 By small window, you mean the event. I only remembered I needed to be careful of where I put my hands and feet. I cannot see the light of coming's window, of course. The event great could trip you up, certainly. So I was walking very carefully when I heard the gunshots. Started, I crashed and listened. That is when I heard this voice come from the room. I knew something terrible had happened yet. It was in the middle of my performance. I had no time to report what I had heard. What makes me wonder is if the gunshots were there, and then what would the other two be heard during the third act? So without a word, you just left the third set start. After the curtain closed for the second set, there was still much to do. You could have prevented this whole misunderstanding if you had only told us sooner. Yes, perhaps I could have. I could. S I see little point in badgering the witness. What do what's done is done. The mind works differently when one is in the middle of performance. Why, I've lost my voice in the middle of a show and kept on singing and the unaware. What? Singing without a voice? For your contradictions were so obvious. <laughs> what? If only I could get Lemon to talk. Rushing her like this doesn't seem to be getting me anywhere. As to why I was there, I cannot say. You heard the gunshots during the second set, during your performance. You're quite sure? Yes. Why would I lie about this? Why didn't you tell us all this yesterday? No one asked. I thought you all knew. Ugh. I told you Mark, he was not the killer. I told you this many times. Yes, you did. But you never told us why. I'm sorry. I was not able to speak of it. Unable or unwilling? She's not talking about we knew. We'll just have to prove it ourselves. As long as she is bound by the fa fact of silence, she won't talk. But if I can prove why she was up there, she will have to admit it. How are you going to prove that? She was sitting on the stage, Apollo. She couldn't have been on above the, up above the ceiling, too. Yes, she could. I've got a theory as to why, too. And maybe I've got the evidence to prove it. I've got a secrecy on this matter. Exactly why? Who bound you to secrecy? I'm not sure I'm allowed to say who it was. No, I think perhaps that is alright. It is just a name, after all. It was Valent Gamarai. Perhaps you know him. Valent Gamarai? Why? You mean Uncle Valent? What? Valent Gamarai? Who is Valent Gamarai? Grand Magician, the one responsible for the illusion performed during our concert. Interesting reaction, Prosecutor Gavin. Lamron was found in secrecy. It's going to take some hard hitting proof to make her talk. Well, I think I know why she was up there, but how do I prove it? I already know. That. I guess I was about to see only when I had the voice. Right here. Uh, Hold up. Lamra, truth be told, the reason for your presence above the ceiling is quite clear. Especially when you consider what happened during your performance. What happened? 
Yes, it's all right here in this video. God, time's gonna lag. Because it's an emulator and it doesn't like these cutscenes. Damn it, I hate this lag. trying to put his guitar out. <laughs> As we can see, Lamarall was clearly not on stage for her entire performance. Oh! Though it saddens me to be so realistic. Lamarall is incapable of actually vanishing, let alone teleportation. So the only explanation is that she was hidden from view. And during that time, she moved to the back of the fort. Polo! What, Shusi? It's not nice to reveal a magician's secrets, and it's against the rules. But I'm a lawyer, I'm not some... Huh? This is all very fascinating. How is it possible? There is only 20 seconds between when she disappears and reappears. She couldn't have moved that fast. There's something wrong. Prosecutor Gavin. This was his concert, his show. He knows how the illusion was formed. Aha! Uh -huh. He's just realizing his own oversight. <laughs> Let's look at the cross section diagram again. Here we can trace a route through the ceiling. He goes from the stage through the backstage to the rear of the floor. Oh, oh! Recall Emerald's testimony from yesterday. I was on my way from the stage to the backstage exit. There was something like a little window there. That's how I saw it. She went from the stage to the backstage exit. Perfect description of this route above the ceiling. Lemron knew of this. Lemron knew of this because of her part of the illusion. But she wasn't the only one who knew. What? Just now in the lobby, Marky told me something. I know. I know if I open vent. I can leave stage and back, back to stage. You said that. Or were you not informed, Prosecutor Gavin? I... I knew about the Vanishing Act, of course. Yet I had no idea of the route that would be used. Why didn't the magician tell him? Magicians only reveal details in their ass through on a need or no basis. They're the bread and butter of magician's life, you know. Which is why he found Lamar to secrecy. Well, Lamra? I am impressed, Mr. Attorney. Marky was right about you. So, what does this mean? Are you saying you used this route above the ceiling? I did. Well, that's that. But I'm still a little confused. Well, why is that, Your Honor? As I said before, There was very little time between she when when she disappeared and when she reappeared. Twenty seconds tops. How could she move so fast? Especially if she stopped to hear the shooter's voice. That that's a good question. Can the witness explain this to the court? I cannot. Very well, Mr. Justice. Yes. It's all up to you. Do your thing. Oh, uh, what thing, Your Honor? You need to explain how Lamaran was able to teleport like she did. Or I'm throwing your case out the with the bathe water. Yeah, uh, why do I get you done? Lamar who isn't going along with the program here. Yeah. As I've stated before, I have not a liberty to speak of the illusion that night in detail. Then you just have to tell us what you can. You'll we'll hear your testimony on this. Mr. Justice, it will be your job to wring the truth out of her. Yes, if you would please. Right. I feel like a student before finals. <laughs> Good luck, Apollo. I follow the route exactly as I was instructed. There is an emergency exit in the backstage where I stage handed awaited. From there, one can enter the forum on the opposite side of the stage. The plan was for me to move there in 22 minutes. I was on my way when I heard the voice. 
Mm, two minutes, you say. The mystery deepens. I suppose it was too much to hope that the judge would come up with something. As does my curiosity. Take it away, Miss Justice. Right, Your Honor. All I have to do is find the contradiction between what Lamar was saying. And what we can say, see is plainly in the video. I figured it out already. I figured it out already. I'm a magician, after all. Well, tell me. Not a chance. Can't reveal another magician's secrets. Come on. Hey, you're supposed to be on my side here. The big illusion. I followed the route exactly as I was instructed. There is an emergency exit in the backstage where a stagehand awaited. From there, one can enter the forum on the opposite side of the stage. The plan was for me to move there in two minutes. Okay. I forgot to stop pressing. How did you uh, proceed along this route? How? Well, why, I walked. But you arrived behind the forum much too fast to have been walking. Tell the truth, Lamar. You rolled some kind of vehicle. What a vehicle? What vehicle? Ah, oh, what a novel idea I like. Hey, that's not bad. That's not a bad guess. Wrong, but not bad. Oh, yes. Well, for the Dharma Tony, I don't mind. <laughs> I'm sorry, but the kill is right. That vent was much too small for vehicles. It was a tight fit. Even I had to crouch as I walked. I couldn't imagine a vehicle that would fit in such a small space. Uh, if it wasn't a vehicle, then one wasn't. You had to be going for a while then, Mr. Justice. Too bad. Ready for the next part. I don't feel like it's a kind of quiz show. There's an emergency exit in the backstage where a stage hand away from Did everyone on the concert staff know about the trick? Not at all, only a few that were needed to help. See, like I said, it's only on a need-to-know basis. So not many people knew about the trick. What were these stage hands required to do? One, thing needed, one needed to open the emergency exit. The door to the stairs is locked, but once through there, there, one can enter the forum on the opposite side of the stage. So when you came back out, you were behind the audience. Yes, that is how it worked. Not a bad show, if I do say so myself. That's Uncle Velament for you, that old grammary touch. But on the video, you were only gone for 20 seconds. How is that possible? That's the part I don't get either. <laughs> yes, it would be hard to go so far in only 20 seconds. The plan was for me to move there in two minutes. I was on my way when I heard a voice. Two minutes? Yes, it can be done in one minute if you're running. Running and not cramped. Dark tunnel above the ceiling. Uh huh, Mr. Attorney. Have you forgotten? Dark or lit, it makes no difference to me. Oh, that's right. That's true, but. So you're saying that on the night of the concert, you made the trip in two minutes? Yes, though I nearly didn't make it in time. You see, I stopped halfway. The rod appears on the video for 20 seconds. She says she made the trip in two minutes. How? If you have my professional opinion, I'll bet the answer's right there in the video. Well, Mr. Justice, perhaps you have some evidence for us. Some Something that can explain the discrepancy between the video and a, and a testimony. Ugh, evidence explained the discrepancy. Um... There's one piece of evidence that explains the discrepancy between video and testimony. Really? What is it? That's it, isn't it? The brute fell. Lemron, do you happen to remember this brooch? Aha, the brooch! We saw that yesterday, did we? It was found at the scene, Your Honor. And you're bringing this up now, why? I thought we had already determined when that was dropped. So did I, but we hadn't. Take another look at the video.
You can see she's wearing the brooch. Hmm, so she is. Let's look a bit later. Oh, what? The brooch, it's gone. What? Yes. The brooch disappeared in the short space of 20 seconds. And it takes a full minute to run from the stage to the backstage. Which means there can be only one explanation. Lamar we see before the vanishing act and the Lamar we see after. A two different people. Ah, okay. She does have like a stunt double or a twin. I think I said that ages ago and I just wasn't really sure about it. What? The brooch we found on the floor at the crime scene. And not just on the floor. But on the floor directly beneath the air vent. Lamar, tell me. Did you draw the brooch on your way from the stage to the backstage? The very moment you witnessed the crime. Yes, I think I did. Order from Verosiku to Gap. From your expression, I gather you had no idea this is the case. I, of course, knew about it. What? Don't get me wrong, I wasn't hiding it. It has never occurred to me that the switch and the shooting took place at the same time. So I was right. There was a switch. There was. Just before the stage's tower rose, Lamar was replaced. While we're on the subject, just who is this replace replacement? Why, the man behind the illusion, Valen Grammarin. It was Grammarin? That's quite the illusion, but I still don't get... He was... That was Grammarin? Wow. He looks... Wow. Okay. It's quite the illusion, but I still don't get the one thing. Yes? The switch happened before the tower rose, correct? So you weren't on the stage? That's right. But this, uh, fake Lamarin was still seen. And she's pretty good. That's true. Come on, Apollo. That's an easy one. That's just playing... They were just playing a recording. The Gavin is on some kind of air guitar band, Fraulein. Oh, you mean I'm wrong? When we play a show live, we play live. No recordings. Perhaps you can explain Lamarin. Very well. Yes, do tell. And now it's your testimony. I had to keep singing even while I moved. You were singing? Yes. Mr. Gavin expressed a dislike for recordings. So I used this. Wait, so you were singing the whole time? Even when you were crawling above the ceiling towards the backstage? Why should it matter where I, where I sing whenever I go is darkness? But if you were singing while you were walking... That's right, wouldn't the shooter and the victim have heard? She was singing right over their heads, after all. That is right. Are you sure? It has to be pretty hard of hearing to miss someone singing in the ceiling. Once again, we come back to the state of the scene of the crime. What state? Ah, I know what he means. The old speaker, Apollo. Speaker? The speaker was blaring at the time of the murder. Ah, that's for monitoring the stage from this room. Monitoring? It pipes in a real-time feed from the stage microphones. Useful for knowing when your set is coming up. Satisfied? The dressing room is fitted with a large speaker playing a direct feed from the stage. At my request, actually. So Lamar was singing in the ceiling. It sounded just like Lamar singing of the speaker. Ingenious, her voice was hidden by her voice. Lamar. I have just remembered something. Do tell. When I heard the noise, the gunshots, yes. It startled me, so I... So you... I stopped singing. What? I forgot the words I was supposed to sing. The song stopped. Thankfully, it was the very beginning of the second verse, so not many would notice. Forehead, the mixing board I lent you, where is it? The mixing, huh? The machine, Apollo, the one that breaks music in the tracks. Oh, this, I'd completely forgotten about it. Let's take a listen.
song does stop there. It does, I must have missed it. Look at the lyric sheet. Look at the lyric sheet at the top of the second verse. See where it says pleasure, pleasure. Now listen again. This is evidence, indeed. I believe we are guilty of making a terrible mistake. The crime didn't happen during the third set. It happened during the second, during Lemuel's ballad. That is true. That no one on stage during the second set could have been the shooter. Which means that Daria and Crescent could have done it. He wasn't on stage for the second set. Well done, you're right, Apollo. Shall we just bring him out in handcuffs and let you beat him to death for it? Yes, I would love that, actually. Cold! No, not cold steel. Pop the bed. I'm just gonna shut up. Well, prosecutor Gavin. Fascinating. I don't believe I've ever seen a trial turn around quite so thoroughly. Yet one problem remains. What's that, prosecutor Gavin? Her forehead theory does have certain kind of logic to it. Yet it is entirely based upon Lemar's testimony. Yes, there are problems with this. Well, it's quite simple, though a painter is saved. What if she's lying to protect the defendant? Objection! But if you have no proof, all I'm saying is that the truth is yet so unclear. Until we hear directly from the man himself. Man? You don't mean... Yes. Though he is a friend and bad man, but Darian Crescent must take the stand. I see no other way. A zone with a new perspective on the case. And is a suspect, to be frank. Finally, the rat's coming out of the hole. And I'm ready to catch him. Darren, ready for justice. This is as good a time as any to pause for a brief recess. The prosecution will summon the witness. Have him here, ready by the time we begin. I'm the last man who needs to be reminded of what his duties are. Very well, court is adjourned for a 15-minute recess. Alrighty.